first century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see it when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and we are one Hear now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one we can make a difference Yeah, we can be the change it takes To make the world a lot more fun Well, if you're feeling kinda down And you need some inspiration To remember who you are Oh, now, child, please don't frown You can choose a new vibration And these words can take you far First century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside. Here, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, and we are live on Twitch. I'm here today with Alexander Rossell. How are you, Alexander? I'm doing fine. So a uh, cognitive dissonance. Yeah, that's an interesting topic, is it not? It's it's really one of my favorites these days because I believe cognitive dissonance is huge right now. There's so many people who are they're confused, they don't know what to listen to. There's been C E N S O R N I M G going on. Uh, people are getting blocked from channels. Um, there's just so much that has made people feel like where they felt like they had stability. Of course, the pandemia, um, stability, connection with others, sense of purpose in life, where am I going, um, being told to, to stand back and not be able to move ahead. I mean, many, many things. And I think the great thing about all of this is it's making us have to question what am I doing and why? Because ultimately, I think that is arising for more and more and more people. I think even those who were quiet at first. And so cognitive dissonance is that is that place where, oh my God, I thought my world was stable and perfect. I mean, I knew exactly what was going to happen each day. And then suddenly, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know what I believe. I don't know what truth is. Um, I need to find myself. I need to find why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so there's this sort of like uncertainty, but it's really what happens. It's like the pot is being stirred. It's what chaos comes. There's always a cycle. When there's a cycle of stability, we go into chaos before we enter into a new cycle. And that chaos, that cognitive dis dissonance is one of the best places we can do our own real soul searching. How do you see that? Uh, cognitive dissonance, um, well, it's what happens when, when, we, uh, when a person is programmed, literally, intentionally programmed into not believing what they see, what they hear, not into in, denying the validity of their own personal experience Very good. And, and it's replaced with believing whatever an authority tells you is is reality okay so right. in other words it, it's it's a it's a product of devaluing your own experience and your own sen senses and your own intuition and and denying it okay and uh, going into it and, and then and denying what you actually can witness yourself and in information in the news or whatever and believing what these people that you have accepted for an authority tell you is real. Like you could have somebody, uh, what, th there's a lot of classic examples. Like, um, for example, uh, uh, let's see that there's somebody 
uh, a red haired person on TV. And but the TV announcer says, oh, that's a brown haired person. And and so, uh, I mean, this is obviously not a real example, but it's a it's a, it's an extreme one as well. Right. Basically, they tell you, no, that person has brown hair. And if you actually believe that they have red hair, even though you are seeing red hair, blazing red hair with your eyes, then they are telling you that you're wrong and right. that you you have a problem that you you're a conspiracy theorist or something like that. Plants by Fred says it was just swamp gas reflecting off of Venus. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Yes. I, I, I was, I was like 11, 12 years old when I started reading UFO magazines, I was fascinated by it for some bizarre reason. And yeah, exactly. It's a, like in um, uh, Men in Black, the first uh, one. Yeah, that was a great one. Swamp gas reflecting off a uh, distant light uh, uh, off the, uh, you know, fog in the sky, you know, that wasn't a UFO. That wasn't an alien, right. you know? So, and, and this is a thing. So people choose to deny their yeah. own senses yes, and, and accept the official narrative. That's where it begins. Cog that's where, that's how the cognitive dissonance is born. Papa, um, I, I want to think of a different word so I don't use the whole thing. You know, there's this right. country called Uganda, and then if you prop up Uganda, you get Maybe that prop, word, right? Prop Uganda, I love it. Propping up Uganda here, so that's what the uh, the the mainstream media tends to do is prop up Uganda, it, it, despite the fact that um, all the facts, uh, scientific and otherwise, point to a completely different version of reality so and when it comes to like the jfk assassination attempt and that whole event and that whole story which is what that well, let's just before you jump into that let's let's look at the book cover again and just mention um because you and i because i actually helped with the publishing of this book and you were working on the publishing of it it is called hold it back a little bit it's a little too close yeah betrayal of a legend and what does it say along the top alexander okay uh it says uh i bring it to your attention that john f kennedy is alive and this was after this was uh after uh this was actually the night of november 22nd and this was a speech given by um my, by McCone to a small, very small group of uh, CIA operatives uh, that um, were tasked with creating, creating and promulgating conspiracy theories around the event. So uh, the full title is Betrayal of a Legend, uh, JFK 1963 to 1985, A Conspiracy of Treason. So uh, this novel, okay, uh, like, like Mutant Message Down Under, it had to be published as a novel, uh, right. even though there are only over 500 factual references in the bibliography. Uh, it uses real names, okay, of real people that you, everybody can look up. The Kennedys, the Onassis family, uh, which actually combined families um, after uh, JFK uh, re was removed from public society in it permanently. But the, the, the thing about the book is that it literally scrubs your mind clean as you read it of cognitive dissonance because it demonstrates in a visceral way as you go through the story and all the different aspects, it, it actually shows everybody how the conspiracy theories were created intentionally to confuse the public, to put the public, right. like the masses into confusion so that they wouldn't look at the only real fundamentally important question that John F. Kennedy was not killed that day. So that is at least 3,000 books, all of them. They assume, they accept the fundamental right. lie that John F. Kennedy was killed on November 22nd, 1963. And that is- The propping up of Uganda. Exactly. And that, and that was its purpose and it was wildly successful. And during, during this time, 
that was when the, and the phrase conspiracy theory was invented. It was invented by the clowns in America in order to shame and criticize and ridicule those people who believed the conspiracy theories and, and or, or should I say that refused to believe that, uh, um, that there was a lone assassin, right? That and that there was and that nobody else was involved, and that it was a, a some crazy single gunman uh, that that shot Kennedy from this library building, right? And that was it. End of story. And so anybody who refused to believe that official narrative was given this label, and then over years and years and years and years and years, the general public was 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 programmed to laugh at those people and ridicule those people that includes me of course and i believe you too and and to not listen to anything we said about anything right alexander this is um really i mean it's so shocking you know in the first place i mean in 1963 i was at a little kid's birthday party and i remember seeing on tv that kennedy was assassinated but then to, and then to go through all the years of getting involved in these different alternative theories, but then to read this book and realize there's a very strong possibility that he was not literally assassinated, that there was a narrative set up, that there was, and I remember just reading the book and kind of going, what? And then I'd come to another step and it'd be like, what? And another one, and it'd be like, <laughs> what? And as you said, it literally unwinds this programming that has been put into our minds to believe that everything happened a certain way. And it's been really, uh, it was an amazing, I, I really, really was impressed reading that book at how the story was told, what the resources were that were used behind the scenes in order to tell this story, and as a novel but as a novel based on fact. And mm -hmm. so I, I feel like it's really a shock for people to go, are you kidding? How could it even be the least bit possible that Kennedy wasn't assassinated? It's, like, it's, it's very shocking. I mean, yeah. even I was shocked, yeah. you know, I, mean, I, I read it while I was editing it, you know, uh, 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 the English version. Right. And um, it, it, it was, I was like, Okay, wow. Well, I can't deny that that makes sense, but oh my God, that is pretty shocking that it's like, I just never saw it that way before. And I'm, I'm a pretty, you know, I, I'm a recovering intellectual. I'm a pretty sharp guy. I went to UC yeah. Berkeley. I did got top grades and, and you know, uh, I'm no slouch and, and he, but some of the things I'm like, I can't believe I never saw it from this angle. I never thought of that, you know? Right. Well, Plants by Fred says it's called an, if it's called an official narrative, you can be sure it's inaccurate, <laughs> which is really true. So, you know, the thing is, this story in and of itself is representative of a lot of other parts and pieces we have going on of realizing that narratives we've been told are not necessarily true. The narratives we've been told that we believed, I mean, we, we still know a lot of people who believe that an airplane hit the Twin Towers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, these, yeah. these narratives, these propping up Ugandas that have been told to get the public to believe a certain thing are really being dismantled now by so many people. And you and I have talked about this. Um, actually, Robert David Steele is an ex-CIA um, uh, operative and he is doing a lot of disclosure tons and tons and tons of disclosure you and I have discussed this we like there's certain people that we follow we listen to and we would like other people to listen to who are just reporting on tons of amazing pieces of information that begin showing us how to dismantle these old old narratives and what yeah. the real truth is and yeah, like uh, martin geddes who who robert Martin Gettys, absolutely martin yeah. geddes is, 
you know, he's a, he's a personal friend of mine. I've never met right. him in the flesh, but uh, he was actually a, um, uh, he started out as a, a client of mine and right. uh, then became a friend. And uh, it, there, there's a lot behind that, but he is, a, he's just published his book, uh, which Robert David Steele uh, writes the foreword for. And right. that is highly, highly, highly recommended because you just, it, to, for me, you just glitched when you said that title. Wow. <laughs> Let me say it again then. Open Your Mind to Change. Wow. By Martin Geddes. It is a very, very powerful, you know, uh, as I say, cognitive dissonance destroying, uh, reprogramming piece of work. And it's, it's 10 essays that he wrote that he put together in a, a relatively short book. Uh, it's more like 10 little booklets into one large booklet. But, right. but it, he's, he's a logician and he calls himself a synthesis, but he started out as an analyst, right. data analyst. He's a systems analyst is what he really is. And very, very high, high end uh, uh, computer systems and communication systems. And that's just been career, that's been his career. So. Right. He's, uh, I mean, he's been hired by very, very powerful uh, multinational corporate companies to do work, highly paid work. He's uh, very, very astute. You know, Robert David Steele calls him a stable genius, one of the most yeah. intelligent people in the world that he's ever known. So uh, it's, a, it's an excellent book for people to, to kind of... Um, when it, a lot of a lot of these terms are thrown out, like uh, you know, data analysis and military analysis, and and of course, the, all about the Q thing, the 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 Q. They call it a movement. It's not really a movement, but the the information that was brought forth by the entity or the group called Q. Okay, right. which stopped by the way um, a while ago, but right. it, it explains the perspective and mentality, the purely objective, fact-based perspective and mentality uh, of uh, and, and how, to, how to discern also between what is possibly true and what is definitely, you know, propping up Uganda over here, right? Yeah, so love it. again, it's like, like we said in the beginning of this show, it's, it's uh, in the first segment, it's about empowering yourself, giving yourself the tools, the mental and emotional tools yes. to be able to discern and decide for yourself what to believe and what, you know, is obviously something you should not believe, which is. And also, uh, and also to give yourself permission. And, yes. and this is something, again, I want to come back and dig into this because it's so important. Betrayal of a Legend is one book that has an amazing amount of unraveling of a something that's a huge um, mythos in our society. Mm -hmm. um, JFK, the Kennedy family, Camelot, the whole... Um, and Robert, not, JFK Jr., all of these yeah. events uh, uh, that, that have to the Kennedy family. But, but the, what, what, what's good about the book that I've, that I've never seen before, I'd never seen before, and it, it, it actually deconstructs the actual yes. method of the generation of conspiracy theories. It de yes. And yes. it shows you exactly how this is done, how yes. you get this propped up, okay? How these things are actually affected and, and how it works with the, with the reporters and with the newspapers and with the media and how they collude in yes. order to promote this and also in this case which has never been written about before there's a lot of information in here that nobody has ever seen before it's never been exposed how russia was involved okay yeah. how, how the the agencies over there were directly involved with the entire program and yeah. it brings up the plan to save the world okay and why it was important that nobody found out that JFK lived, why, why it was covered up. It's not a negative thing. It's not a nefarious thing necessarily. Right. There are major, I mean, he, 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 th there's a lot to it, but right. to save the world is very, very positive. And 
he had to be hidden from the world. He had to be uh, in order for, uh, uh, there are various options and it, it had to happen the way it did. Uh, unfortunately, it completely messed up uh, you know, several billion people's minds, you know, right. so. Well, uh, and we're in the midst of unraveling that right important. now. And that's what is so important here. I was listening to uh, Robert David Steele the other day that he broadcast in Spanish, actually, because he's, he grew up speaking Spanish. And um, so I think some things he puts out in that format. And he talks about when Kennedy was assassinated or the Kennedy, whatever happened, um, that we yeah learn more about in Betrayal of a Legend, um, that then some retired generals stepped up and said, we're going to start an organization um, to help bring truth forward in the world and help change the course from darkness to light. And it ended up being called the White Hat Organization, not, not really an organization, but the White Hat Movement. And then when, and what he tells about, I'm just telling what he shared, because this is not my background per se, but he as an ex-CIA operative has a lot of knowledge about the internal working of things. And that when the Twin Towers happened, that he, that they, that actually um, current generals ended up joining the white hat movement. And there became a movement to begin bringing forward truth as opposed to false narratives. And, that's what we're in the midst of right now. And it is, it's really interesting because the, those who have manipulated people's minds in the world have worked at pitting us against each other. There have been wars that have been created. Um, wars where women and children and people who were innocent of anything were being killed by others who had an idea in their mind that there was something wrong with those people or what they were doing and really were designed to be a whole humanity on planet earth who loves each other, who cares about each other, who supports each other. And in the same sense, um, the, what has happened most recently in events in the North American, the United States election, um, there was a lot of, um, things being propped up in Uganda, uh, getting people to become pitted against each other. And also the recent pandemic, the same thing, where those who wear and those who don't wear, those who do the jab and those who don't do the jab. Um, oh, they're wrong. Oh, they're bad. There's something wrong with them. On Divide and conquer. And, huh? Divide and conquer. But it's but, just, yeah, you know. This is the greatest fallacy ever perpetuated. And it is something we absolutely must wake up from. And I, every time we can have a conversation about any of these topics with another person and just be in love about what that person's choices are, we literally begin changing this dynamic in the world. I change it. I change it by changing myself. And it's one of the things that I feel like is so important to um, keep reiterating, let people know, um, and so unwinding the truth, unwinding the stories that have been told and the cognitive dissonance that's been created, it's really what we're in the midst of in this great shift of the ages. Yeah. Hey, Robert David Steele has four movies that he's uh, been working on that are yes. coming out. Yes, yeah. yes, and, yes. And also there's a new movie, um, uh, The Sound of Freedom, which is a full length uh Hollywood production, well, <laughs> non-Hollywood production, let's say, but Hollywood quality production that's based on a true story and uh, that runs uh, all through uh, South uh, up to North America about- What's um, the name of it again, Alexander? The Sound of Freedom. The and sounds. it's about uh, child sex trafficking. Right. And, and this is, uh, this is, um, Obviously, the, the, the mainstream institutions will fight this all the way, but uh, there is a, a trailer on YouTube that you can watch it right now. And um, it's, uh, it's actually the movie itself, from what I, uh, I've seen, uh, comments from Mel Kay and, uh, and Robert David Steele and Juan uh, they, they It is watered down mm -hmm. because, because the actual truth 
some aspects of the actual truth, uh, the, the masses will never know because right. um, they're so horrific. Right. So, but, but the, the bulk of it, the main, the, the main idea is definitely put forth. Uh, the people that saw the, the movie, the initial screening for this group that went to Las Vegas to see it, the group of uh, truth warriors that did that and pundits, uh, uh, they said it was very, very, it made a huge impact on them. Right. And these are people that already knew a lot about right. the topic. So, and it still made a huge impact on them. So right. uh, the, this is where people can start. They can, uh, they get like about 9-11. They could go uh, watch the documentary Loose Change. Uh, they could go to 9-11 Truth. They could, you know, read about Building 7, which all they had a little for, they had a little office fire and, you know, a 42 story <laughs> building collapses in 30 seconds you know, into its own footprint in a perfectly right. symmetrical way, okay, right. at grab the speed of gravity with um, uh, nothing but an office fire, come on. So, uh, you know, that that's where, you know, talking about cognitive dissonance, you know, how could you deny something like that, you know? Right. <laughs> well, you watch the video and you're like, okay, this is pretty obvious, unless you are so deeply programmed that it triggers this emotional no 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 you know um it can't be true you know right uh, well which, in this which, which a lot of people still are suffering from like like, yes. like the jab and you know yeah. and the the, the dark stuff yeah. right mm -hmm. so um by the way uh just to throw out something that everybody can look at the great barrington declaration is very mm -hmm. soft and gentle and informative over 40 something thousand medical professionals across the world have yeah. signed it as a declaration. And uh, the, the website, it's very, it's any language you speak almost in the world, it, it has it in your language. Nice. So, um, it's uh, uh, gbdeclaration.org. G Great. as in good, B as in bountiful, declaration.org i'll put and, some of these links under the video too uh, okay and uh it's interesting it's very interesting it's very very short very very short uh it's only like a page and a half and it talks about um the harm being done mostly to the children uh through these um uh, uh what do they call them measures <laughs> through these uh you know medical yes. security measures so right. anyway uh the, these are these are things that um are getting out there like you said these these movies and these declarations and the information is is easily available it's not being blocked actually uh much of it is not being blocked and which leads us to an interesting topic which is are we simply really watching a movie has the, the world been taken back by the White Hats, like we mentioned, okay, these generals and the White Hats that have been working for, you know, uh, 60 years to take back the, the, not just the country, but the planet. Right. And, and really, are we just watching actors and actresses uh, on TV and, and, and in administrations, you know, uh, are they just doing this to wake up humanity more? before the big reveal happens. Right. I mean, is, well, is there really, is there, uh, is the corporation called the United States of America, Inc., was that really bankrupted back in 2018? And uh, we're just watching a show. We're just right. watching literally a, a fake Hollywood production that, yeah. that, 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 that the, the, the unawakened masses, so that they don't freak out too much and they believe that there is actually a, a president of the United States. That's, that's you know, a, 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 what are we really looking at here? And then you get into, you talk about the matrix. What is reality? You exactly. know, what is the nature of reality? I mean, really? And, and well, so, you know, and then, and then you could go off into, you know, all these people doing ayahuasca ceremonies and, and, you know, getting into these other things to try to discover 
you know, what is real and listening to old Terrence McKenna shows and tapes and reading those books and such. So, but um, it all ties together. It all ties together. This is the great awakening. This is the great shift of the ages, right? That you wrote about so, so, so wonderfully, so articulately bringing in the ancient wisdom and combining it with modern physics, you know, and, and you know, everybody should, that should be required reading, you know, for the, Absolutely. for the star seeds for sure, you know, Absolutely. And, and because you have references to other books. And so, you know, it leads into all these, like, like my last blog post uh, on, on the cusp of the wave on my blog, I put links into document, like the thrive movie and, and right. all these things documentaries and articles and different and we, just have, we just have a new website 21st century superhuman has been completely rebuilt.com yeah. and the books are available there they can be read at our website we're kind of they're still on amazon but we we're moving away from that and they're coming out as audio books some of them are already done they're also coming out in spanish so we have a yes. whole movement a community these are being called some of the most important books on the planet and guidebooks for our times because they really show us how to live in these times of great change. They're simple, they're fun. Anytime I go in and I'm even working on editing, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is such amazing information. And it was really a download. It was yeah. a cosmic download from higher dimensions and they're amazing books. Um, I, I, yeah. so I believe it and I know it in my heart and soul. So Alexander, so I yes. Thank you. I made my own book, my own ebook out of my blog. Uh, I, I wrote the blog between 2010 and 2015. And uh, that was my last post in 2015. And um, but to this day, uh, I found uh, we were talking about the hundredth monkey effect. Yes. And, and, and so I looked it up. I said, you know, I, I wrote the article before I actually wrote the blog, but I, I think I included it in my blog. And so I looked, I had to look it up and I'm reading through it. And I'm like, man, I don't even remember writing this. It was so long ago, but you know what? Yeah, it, it's there. So the information uh, is available. And uh, my book is called on the cusp of the wave, my ebook. And, and so, and where's that available? And, and your book and my book and Betrayal of the Legend and the Robert David yeah. Steele material and, and Martin Geddes' new book. They're, they're the tools that, that people can use to get up to speed and to build that new foundation for, for comprehending the tool set, the mental tool set for comprehending what's really going on here and also for empowering themselves to be able to discern truth from fiction, you yes. know, from, from, you know, you know, uh, propping up Uganda and, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and comprehend the bigger game that's yes. being played during this ascension process and, and, and why it's being played. What's at stake here? Yes. Because there's a whole world at stake here. This is, this yes. is for, marbles this is for the whole the whole pot you know it is well and what i always uh, really like you know to what say I mean? yeah what i always really like to say is there's seven billion plus of us and there's only a handful of what we call them and there really is no us in them we're all just different players in different positions in this game however if all of us stand up and we claim ourselves as free beings we come out of the cognitive dissonance and begin paying attention to our own, our own consciousness, our own awareness, our own hearts, our own minds, our own sensory input. We turn off the TV and tell it to go stand in the corner until it thinks of something good to say. And we just begin living in new ways. We change the world. I mean, who mm -hmm. I, I saw a guy the other day who was, uh, I don't know, he's the Minister of Agriculture, maybe of Canada or something, I, I can't remember for sure. And a guy was interviewing him and he said, there's nothing wrong with glyphosate, I'll drink a, I'll drink a, I'll drink a jug of it. And Ooh. the guy goes, the guy, and the, the lady who was a newscaster said, we think this is an Aaron Brockovich moment. And the guy said, well, we've got some here. Would you really like a glass of it? And the guy goes, no, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> you know? And the truth is, you know, it, these old systems, and we're going to call it the systems of darkness, of the experiment in darkness, of the experiment in me saying, I'm not responsible. Just let them do it. Let those who are oppressing us do it. Let those who are, you know, 
telling us what we should do, run the show. But it's time for us to begin running the show ourselves and say, no, I'm not going to eat food anymore that has glyphosate in it. I am going to begin supporting organic farmers around here. I'm going to begin growing my own food. Um, I'm not going to listen to the news broadcasting that's run by six companies in the world, it's owned by six corporations that the CIA calls at three o'clock in the morning to tell them what they're gonna report that day. I'm not gonna listen to that anymore. I'm not gonna let my brain be programmed by something that is a made up story. And so to come out of this cognitive dissonance, to come out of this programming that's happened as a game in the journey through darkness. I always say, you know, there, Atlantis was here and we went into a cycle of darkness, 12,500 years, if you believe in time. And now here we are equal to Atlantis and we're coming up into the time of light, 12,500 years. And med beds are coming forward and all these different ways to heal ourselves, to be whole, to quantum financial system, whatever you want to call it without arguing about what it is, but putting enough abundance that is here into everyone's hands so that everyone can play a role in creating a beautiful, healthy world. This is what we're unwinding from and moving into awakening ourselves in. Hey, baby, wake up. You know, it's time to not be sleeping anymore. It's time to not listen to things that are not true anymore. It's time to say, time to breathe time to breathe freely without anything over my face yes yes. ancient initiation rites um, that have been programming the world culture through a supposed pandemia so time time to take off our masks and discover who we really are yes the great apocalypse is the real the taking off the great unveiling yes waking up to who we truly are Mm -hmm. and and that's literally that's the whole point really is 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 uh on an individual level and and on a mass level as well to to who what is a human being what why are we here you know and who are we really i wrote a um I wrote a, a, one of my blog articles, very, very short. One of the shortest was called Identity Crisis. Uh-huh. And uh, it starts out actually with a statement by, I think, Rupert Sheldrake, who developed uh, the 100th Monkey philosophy and concept, is that it says, you know, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so uh, the rest of that very brief article, uh, I tried, I do my best to attempt to explain what that means. And that's, that's the crux of the, of the challenge here is that if you identify with a meat suit, okay, a temporarily uh, rapidly aging physical body, if that's your whole identity and your social and all the relationships associated with that in time, in space and time, then you will behave in a certain way. However, if you identify with your eternal higher self, your soul, so to speak, your Atman, your whatever, whatever name or label you want to put on it, your consciousness, and that you, you, don't, you are not a body, but you have a body, okay? Like a car, you know, you, do we, people, actually there's maybe some people do this, but uh, they, I am my car. No, you're not your car. You have a car and you use it to drive around and get around in this world. OK, the body is basically, you know, a, a analogous to a car, a vehicle. It's a vehicle in this world, in this dimension. So you have a body. And of course, you should take care of it. You should, you know, keep it, keep it running well, you know, to, uh, change the, the oil once in a while, like do fasting, you know. Do these different things to take care of it, get get the best fuel possible, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, tune it up once in a while. But don't mistake the car for yourself. Don't don't make that mistake of identifying everything in your world, in your life, in your beingness as the car. No, you are the person who has the car and who takes care of it. So but if and in that article, in one sentence, I say, if everybody would shift that identity to our consciousness and our souls, the world would literally change in a heartbeat. 
because we would no longer emphasize the material things and we would emphasize joy and love and which right. is what we really are so and harmony and peace between all of us and so so and all of these things all the information coming out um is basically showing humanity in uh um informing humanity about where we have come from you say 12,500 years where have we come from in this last cycle and 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 who we who we have been we've all been black cats at some point as a soul you know we've, we've played those roles and so the, there's no um there there's no reason anymore to to attack and belittle and and dwell on the history, we should just learn from it and then and deal with the situation now. The goal is to move out of the darkness, is to move into a light-filled style of living and harmony and love and joy and light from dark to light. We move from dark to light now. And, and part of the light is awareness. Part of the light is the light of, infra, of, of edu self education and awareness and enlightenment. To, yes. you know and so that's what's going on and that's what these movies that are coming out and all these things are coming out and mel k and robert david Steele and wano savin and 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 michael jocko and all these people are are basically presenting hey this is our real history the the, the what happened to jfk what really happened to him this is our real history this yeah. is it's not what we got taught every almost everything we get taught, taught in school it was a, an intentional lie in order to make us believe in a system that enslaved us, that kept yeah. us down, that kept yeah. us obedient and complicit, right? I thought school was the most boring thing. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, what am I doing? Yeah, and so, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're deprogramming from that matrix and we're reprogramming ourselves for a, a new matrix, a new more harmonious, abundant, and fun-filled matrix. That's like, you know, we're, 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 we're going into Star Trek, but without all the old baggage, you know, from all these thousands of years of war, you know, we're leaving that behind, you know? Right, yep. Well, Alexander, I just, um, I'm thinking, um, let's sign off here um, in the next few minutes. And I just wanna um, repeat again, you assisted with the publishing this year of a book called Betrayal of a Legend about the, do you call it the assassination? The, the, the event, the JFK event. I call it the event. Okay. <laughs> and okay. and, and uh, it, also uh, the removal of JFK. Yeah. And is it available? It's available on Amazon, right? It's available on Amazon.com. It's also on uh, um, Code. Kobo and Smashwords, I believe, and uh, uh, available in an ebook and available in a print book as well. Cool. Um, I, I highly recommend it. It's great reading. It's really one of those books that begins disconnecting the false dots that have been made and really making you wake up to, oh my God, what is real? What really is real? What really is truth? Mm -hmm. And then we will be on again doing news and views and we'll be live here on Twitch. And then these will show up on my YouTube channel and some in my member content. And I think we also are planning on doing a private news and views that will be in my member content level where people can come and we can actually discuss things that we can't discuss here and have kind of more of an in-depth conversation and use all the proper words and terminology. That's right, yeah, yep. Instead of propping up Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really great to be here with you today. And um, are you still doing uh, training, consulting or? Oh, yes. Um, and I know you're working yes. on potentially building a community. Yes, um, uh, I have. In Rincon, yes, my, my property down there uh, uh, to um, develop a little mini community and retreat healing center and also a gathering center for right. people of like mine for, um, uh, from all over the world. And much more in the future, much more. And I've known this for years that it's meant to happen. But 
and uh, gathering people together uh, in, in a physical way. Yeah, that's being about, I'm still uh, very much a uh, life coach and uh, spiritual mentor. And um, I'm also still a surf instructor on occasion. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah. I, um, you know, so I can in instruct people how to ride uh, waves in the ocean or the cosmic waves, uh, the cosmic waves of change and the cosmic waves of ascension that are hitting humanity. So, and I'll, I'll do all that called mucho gusto. You know, I am fluent in Spanish. So yeah. here in Costa Rica is where I'm at. I have an ashram hostel, which is uh, kind of semi-opening now. And again, after this last year. And uh, yeah, I have a couple of apartments as well. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm easy to find. And uh, yeah, so I'm available and I am getting a little busier. Uh, I do Skype sessions, by the way, for uh, distant. Um, I'm a Reiki master, energy healing master. So uh, I can do that, obviously, from any distance and send energy. But I also do uh, various um, therapies uh, when a person is physically here. So with energy. So I I've been down there and visited you and I also, we are set up to, to do trips down there and do retreats and as things open up uh, coming out of this past year. And it is a really incredibly beautiful place, a great place to release oneself from those pressures of the world and begin really getting in touch with your soul again. It's, it's fabulous for that. It's like a whole another higher dimensional universe as some of our yeah. others are as well, but really exceptional. And it's, it's just stunning. You know, it's one of the, you know, paradises on earth, you know, tropical paradises. And so, yes. I mean, beautiful yeah. beaches, monkeys in the trees, scarlet macaws flying over my house. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and down in Rincon, even more so, you're backed by pure, virgin, pristine rainforest. And yes. and then on the other side is the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Dulce, you know, and, and Rincon Bay. And it's just absolutely Corcovado National Park, which is the crown jewel of the park system in Costa Rica, something like 42,000 uh, hectares or square miles or something. I mean, it's amazingly large. And, and that's in my book. The Southern Costa Rica handbook, but uh, is right there. Drake Bay, uh, Karate, yes. Cabo Matapalo. So it's a um, this this is the kind of environment people are flocking to in order to really get into their healing process if they can. Yes. Um, it reminded me of Hawaii a little bit. They, um, yes, a lot. Yeah. It's gorgeous on the Pacific, just amazing. So um, thank you so much for being here with me. And I just wanna encourage everyone on their journey, keep waking up, keep being present and accounted for, keep listening to your heart. Alexander, I really appreciate your friendship, your camaraderie as we journey on this path. Um, some of us are more the front of the wave and our voices, every one of our voices is so important. And each one of us has something to share and something to give in this awakening process. Go ahead, were you yes. gonna say something? Uh, no, just uh, you said uh, that okay. we are uh, front runners and uh, vanguard visionaries yeah. is another term I came up with and uh, Sasha Stone liked that one. And um, yeah. oh, another recommendation, Sasha Stone. He's putting out so many amazing videos. Absolutely. Uh, shows yep. and such though. So. Yeah, Charlie Ward, um, Charlie Free. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, Magenta Pixie, Jordan Sapphire. Yes. I mean, there's a whole crew of people who have this really delicious truth telling media going on. And we just encourage everyone to participate, to listen, to pay attention, to share with your friends. And I just want to say adios. Ciao. Remember to breathe, smile, and love. Mm -hmm. Love you guys and see you soon. Namaste and pura vida, as they say here in Costa Rica. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. And these words can take you far I am a 21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside I am a 
such a race to human now, now, now is the time.